Okay, the time taken for a small ball to fall 1 meter is 0 0.45 plus or minus 0 0.02 seconds. Calculate the percentage uncertainty in the measurement of time. Okay, so this here is absolute uncertainty and we want to find the percentage uncertainty. You get that by doing the absolute uncertainty divided by the mean times 100. So 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.45 our measurement times 100. That gives us 4.4%. So our measurement there is 0 0.45 could be 4.4% too big or too small. Okay, I'm going to use this example to demonstrate why taking small, uh, bigger measurements and readings produces a smaller percentage uncertainty. So here we're trying to find the mass of one coin. Okay, the absolute uncertainty in any reading from the top hand balance is plus or minus one gram, and that's fixed. Okay, when we measure the mass of one coin, we get four grams. So the percentage uncertainty there is going to be one divided by four times 100, which is 25%. When we measure the mass of 100 coins, we get 356. So that means the mass of one coin is uh, 3.56 grams. I just divided by 100 there. Okay, explain why this is better. Okay, so we want to find the percentage uncertainty in the mass of 100 coins. So the absolute uncertainty is fixed, still plus or minus 1 gram. So if I do 1 plus or minus 1 divided by 356, I get a percentage uncertainty in the mass of 100 coins of 0.28%. Now, to get the actual mass of a coin, I divide the mass of uh, 100 coins by 100. But that doesn't affect the percentage uncertainty, it's still 0.28%. Okay, so you can see taking a larger reading reduces the percentage un uh, uncertainty in the measurement. Okay, here's another example. We're asked to determine the acceleration at 8 seconds by drawing a tangent on the graph. So a novice would draw the tangent like this, work out the change in y, and then divide it by the change in x, like this. Okay, so however, the percentage uncertainty is going to be quite big because the tangent that we've drawn is actually quite small. So someone who knows what they're doing would actually draw a much lo longer tangent like this and figure out the change in y and the change in x like that. So you can see those changes are bigger. So even if you're off by a, um, a small square, the percentage uncertainty is still going to be um, smaller because you've got a larger reading. Okay, this image shows the screen of an oscilloscope with a waveform on it, and the x-axis represents the time. And each division on the x-axis represents one millisecond. Determine the time period of wave. So that's basically how long one wave takes. So I'm basically trying to find like the equivalent of wavelength, but in terms of time here. Okay, so one way to do it would be just measure from here to here, because this one is nicely aligned, and you can um, also this one's almost aligned as well. So the problem with this is if we just measured from those two, we'd get a really large absolute uncertainty here because we've got er er errors in both readings at the start and the end. Well, a better way to do this would be to actually measure over multiple, okay? because when you're taking a larger reading, you've got a smaller percentage uncertainty like this. So here I'm measuring over seven waves, okay? so I can count that very carefully. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, need to be careful to count that out. And the t uh, reading there is around 7.2 here. Yes, around 7.2, and each uh, division is worth one millisecond. So overall time is 7.2 milliseconds divided by seven waves. So I'm getting 1.03 uh, milliseconds per wave. This reading here would have a much smaller percentage uncertainty than if I had just measured the length of one wave. Okay, in this example here, we've got the same voltage signal with different scales on the y-axis. Discuss which diagram is more useful for finding the peak voltage, in other words, the amplitude. Okay, so in one of them, this one, I'd have to measure this. Okay, and this one, I'd have to measure this. Okay, so as you can see, straight away, we can tell that um, the second diagram is better okay, because we're taking a larger uh, measurement there. Okay, so that means uh, we'd get a smaller percentage density. But actually, the best way of measuring here is actually measure from peak to the trough there and then divide that by two. So that's called a peak to peak voltage and you just divide that by two instead. Because again, the larger the reading you take, the smaller the percentage uncertainty. So measure from peak to peak and divide that by two and the larger distance reduces the percentage uncertainty.